Hi, my name is Bailey Mullins. I'm sure what has brought you here today was my Instagram post. If it wasn't, thanks for watching. And with that, I'll go over what I put in my post. Today marks three years since I was raped on August 5th, 2015. It is one year since I publicly came out about it to my family and to a majority of my friends. I want to thank everyone that's helped me in my healing process over the last year. It's been incredibly difficult and I encountered a lot of obstacles that I thought I had moved past and somehow they resurfaced, but I'm here, I'm happy, I'm healthy, and I'm moving on, and I'm really thankful for that. And I've been met with an insane amount of love and support, and I want to give back to you guys. And I also want to be a light for victims and survivors alike who have maybe not found the strength to completely come forward with their experiences or feel like they've been silenced or shut out or feel like they don't have a platform to speak. And I want to be able to help you either come forward with your story or I want to be the shoulder you can cry on because I know it's really difficult to be alone. And before I explain the purpose of this video, I'm going to give a trigger warning. I will be discussing in detail both times I was sexually assaulted. If you know you are not in a mental state to hear such details, I would close the video. If you would like to talk to me personally, I am absolutely open to that. I will link my Instagram down below so you can message me if you feel so inclined. But I don't want anyone watching this video because they feel like they have to. Please only watch it if you know you are in the appropriate mental state to do so. Um, I have everything written out below me just in case I forget a part or so I don't go off track and lose my focus, which can be kind of easy when I'm retelling my stories. But the reason I decided to tell you guys what happened to me this year was because last month at the beginning of July, I got in a really heated argument with a family member over what rape was. And in short, I'll save you guys those details. They insisted that rape was only rape if there was a penis penetrating a vagina. So not only in my eyes did that exclude all of the rape and sexual assault experiences in the LGBT community, it also invalidated all of the rape that includes you know first base second base third base all those things leading up to penetration in heterosexual sex because it is so much more than just penis penetrating a vagina and i didn't know at the time that a argument like that would trigger me like it did i immediately stormed away and i honestly cried for several hours I was so hurt and so upset that someone so close to me could say something like that, which is really ignorant. And so I felt that it wasn't my duty, but I felt like it was my calling to publicly come forward with what happened to me so that other people who have been in similar experiences can maybe be find closure in what happened to them so that I can help you guys be more aware of your surroundings and maybe who you're surrounding yourself with. Well, I can help you guys who do still have a very conservative definition of rape, maybe open your eyes as to what rape is. I am hoping that you guys will walk away understanding that rape is so much more than just penetration and that it's going to vary from every experience and not one will be the same. And in order to combat this, we have to be willing to accept all the ways that rape can occur. Because if we have a very narrow view of what it is, we're not going to combat it. And we're not going to be able to put away the people that need to be put away. And we're not going to implement laws that will help prevent this. And so, with that said, before I tell my stories, I do want to read you guys' definition 
of rape as defined by the Department of Justice in January of 2012. It is the penetration, no matter how slight, of the vagina or anus with any body part or object or oral penetration by a sex organ of another person without the consent of the victim. So, clearly, it is more than just penile penetration. And with that, I would like um, to begin telling you my story. So, in 2015, I had been seeing a boy, and it became pretty clear after a few dates that he was looking for something I was not, and so we agreed to stop seeing one another. One night, he asked me to come say goodbye to him before he went to visit his family for a few weeks, and as my naive 16-year-old self, I agreed, but only on the terms that he promised not to touch me. And he immediately agreed. And so I was like, okay, no harm. I'll come over. And I remember walking into his apartment. And he had kind of an L-U-shaped counter. So I took my place at the other end that he was not on. And as we were talking, he kept moving closer and closer, making awkward small talk as young teenagers do. And... Uh, when he got closer to me, he asked to see my new belly button piercing that I had just gotten that day because the next day was my birthday. I was turning 17, and it was the birthday present that my mom decided to give to me. So he lifted up my shirt and was looking at it and complimented it. Of course, I started getting a little bit scared because I did ask him not to touch me. But then he pulled back, and we continued talking. And then after a few minutes, he started to kiss me. At this point, again, I had a massive crush on him, so I kissed him back, and I didn't see any harm in that because it was just kissing, and I was okay with that. And then after a few minutes, he picked me up, and I was like, nope, I don't want to go any farther than this. I asked you to promise me you wouldn't touch me before, and he didn't really listen. He just kind of picked me up and put me back on a chair and he started to touch me and I remember just I kept on saying that I didn't want to go any farther than that and before I knew it he had carried me into a room of one of his old roommates that was completely empty like the rest of the apartment complex in fact and he put me down on a wooden table and I declined and I remember telling him no, and that I didn't want to have sex, and I didn't want to do any of that. But as I was saying that, he already had my pants down, and he looked at me and was like, just 12 minutes, just give me 12 minutes. And when I looked to the right side, he already had 12 minutes on the timer on his phone. My pants were already down, and I could already tell what his mind was made up to be doing. And I realized in that moment that if I had screamed, no one would hear me. If I tried to run, my 5'6", 107-pound self had absolutely nothing against a 6'4 athlete. And I accepted my fate because I had nowhere to go. I had already said no multiple times, and he had already had the timer set up on his phone. And had been in his head all along. And so I finally just succumbed, and I said, okay, with the feet. And as he began, he turned me around, and it was at this point that it took a really, really disgusting turn. He shoved it into my ass, and I remember losing my vision instantly. I remember screaming really loud, and I hit him, and I whipped around, and I couldn't see anything. My vision was black. It took about 15 seconds for my vision to come back, but it would only come in waves. So it was, it felt like I was just taking really long blinks, but I couldn't see anything. And the pain was indescribable. And I've, I've yet to feel pain like that until this day. And I remember tasting my own tears. I couldn't even feel myself crying, but I was. I remember screaming at him to stop. And I kept saying I couldn't see and that it hurt too bad and I mainly was just concerned because I could not see anything I mean my vision was gone 
and the pain was unbearable. And he just pushed me back on down on the table and he said that he was going to keep going and that I should just get over it. And that's exactly what he did. And he finished as the timer went off right on the 12 minute mark. And he immediately fixed himself, pulled my pants up, and excused me from his apartment. And I remember leaving and I sat in my car and I lost it because I didn't know what had just happened to me because I had said okay in the beginning. I didn't consent to being anally penetrated and being forced to say okay didn't seem like consent to me. So I called my best friend Jordan at the time and I told her that whatever presents her and my other best friend at the time, Alex, might have gotten me for my birthday, I wanted them gone. I wanted them to return them and instead I would like them to split the price of a plan B and that's what I wanted for my birthday because he had finished in me with again without my consent and that's what they did the next night at my birthday dinner we stayed behind in my car while my parents walked into the restaurant and I took the plan B and then I threw it far away from my car and I moved on and I remember the next day I did try to confront him about what happened and instead he yelled at me he got really upset and when I asked him if he had finished in me, he said, duh, you told me you were on birth control last time we hung out. And for several months, I had no idea what to call what happened to me. I wrote about it in my creative writing class. I told maybe a few friends, but I couldn't tell any adults because I knew that they would have been legally required to report it. And as someone going into her senior year of high school on a really successful cross-country team and trying to focus on applying and getting into college, I knew I didn't have the time to be focusing on something that I would probably lose. And it wasn't until second semester that a women's shelter came in and they covered all what rape is and what it includes and all the definitions. And I learned that what had happened to me was coercion and that's not consent. And that even if you're having consensual vaginal sex, that if you're having anal sex and you didn't consent to that, that that is rape. Because at every point in the process, there should be consent. And I cried. No one knew why I was crying, but I cried because I finally knew what had happened to me. But I went to college, and it was after the second experience that I spent all of the summer of 2017 in absolute despair. I was dealing with flashbacks, with nightmares. I used to have to pull over on the highway because I could feel what the first guy had been doing to me again. And it was at that point that I realized I would absolutely have to come forward and stop living, not a lie, but keeping this lie to myself because it wasn't fair that I had to struggle through this alone and not be able to have my support from my family or from a lot of my friends. And that's what pushed me to come forward last summer. But again, my second experience was entirely different from my first experience. Um, and this is one where I think a lot of people will consider this just a misunderstanding. But, and I don't think that's fair because I know that not only did my first experience happen to a lot of people, I know that this second one continually happens to people. And I want to discuss that and break it down. I, in last May, had come to terms with someone that a friendship was all that would be there. But they decided to still spend the night after that just because they live far away. And as we were laying in bed that night, he pulled me on top of him. And I do not sleep with clothes on. I sleep with underwear on. So he pulled me on top of him and he just started touching me everywhere. Again, I wasn't asked for this. I didn't ask for that. And he did um, penetrate me with his fingers. And he was touching me elsewhere. And this was a trigger to me. And I didn't know it would be. And I couldn't move and I couldn't speak. And I remember I wanted so badly to tell him that.
that I didn't want this and I didn't want to be doing it, but no sound could come out of me and I could not move. And after a few minutes of me not responding, he just tossed me back to my side of the bed and went to sleep. I spent the rest of the night in another room sobbing and I kicked him out of my place the next morning. And again, I tried to confront them. They just took it as me trying to put blame on them, which isn't the case. And I need people to understand that if there is not an explicit yes said, that you should not go ahead and engage in whatever act that you're looking to do. And that if someone comes to you and feels that they've been wronged, listen to them. We might not be trying to attack you, but we want to work through what happened so there's not a misunderstanding on either side. Like, listen to us. We're not yelling at you. But we need to be listened to because so often we're shut down and no one wants to hear us because everyone automatically assumes we're lying or we're exaggerating and it's not fair. And to round it back to what caused us all, in both instances was this more than just a penis penetrating a vagina. The first time I was coerced in two vaginal sex, then unconsensually anally penetrated, then unconsensually finished in, and that was it, and I was kicked out. And the second time, someone was touching me without asking for my permission, even though it had already been established that neither of us were looking for that. And I hope this helps a lot of you guys realize that maybe some things you've done have been questionable and that you guys will take this as a learning experience in the future. I am really, really sorry for all the victims who have not yet found the support or the power or the strength to come forward yet. I know it's really hard to struggle alone but it's going to get better. And I can absolutely promise you that. And if you want to tell me about what happened, I will be here and I will listen and I will help you. I will help you find the appropriate resources if that's what you would like. But if you want to keep it between me and you, I'm here and we can do that. But um, that was... Those were both of my experiences, and I hope that you guys were able to sit here and hopefully listen to them all. Um, I still struggle with them. I know it's going to be a lifelong struggle and that I'm never going to completely heal, but that's okay. You know, I'm still here, and I didn't ask for these things to happen to me, and I don't think I deserved to have them happen to me. They weren't meant to happen to me, but they have shaped me into the person I am today. And for that, I'm really grateful and I wouldn't change it for anything. I'm very strong. I'm very independent and I won't settle. That's for sure. But I do want everyone to understand that rape is so much more than just a penis penetrating a vagina. And I need you guys to understand that you are entitled to so much more than what we're taught we are. As women, especially, I need you guys to know it's okay to say no. It's okay to fight back. It's okay to not want something. You don't owe anyone anything. And to my members of the LGBT community, I understand that you guys have a very difficult time in coming forward because people think that, you know, a woman can fight off a woman, a man can fight off a man. It's not sex if it's not a penis and vagina. And I'm sorry 
and I hurt for you guys and I need you all to understand that I'm here for you too and I will fight for you as hard as I'll fight for the next person and we're only going to get better together and I just want to let everyone know that I'm here and I'll help when I can and I hope me coming forward with my story has helped you guys find the strength that took me so long to find. So with that, I'm going to end this video and if any of you guys have questions or concerns or simply want to talk to me, that I'm absolutely open to that and I would love to be able to help some people so I can give back to the community that helped me. Alright, thank you.